Hello, and welcome to our channel where we explore the world of Odoo. Today I'm going to explain how to update the QuickBoard app to Odoo 18 and add some new features to the app. If you haven't set up your development environment yet, please watch my previous video on setting up Odoo development environment. Let's get started. The first step is to install the additional Python packages, Pretty Table, JSON Schema, Autogen, and Pandas. Next is to copy the Odoo 17 version to the Odoo 18 custom add-ons directory and open Odoo 18 directory in VS Code. Open the manifest file and change the version to 18 and save it. Now we're going to use the upgrade code tool from Odoo 18. Open a terminal window, make sure the virtual environment is activated, and type in the upgrade code command with the quickboard directory path as the parameter. With this tool, all codes that use list views will be updated. Unfortunately, I couldn't find more information about what else needs to be updated, so we have to test it ourselves. For larger projects or more complex modules, it's advisable to run automatic tests with unit tests instead of manual testing, but that's outside the scope of this video. For now, let's just run it and see if there are any errors. As you can see here, Odoo 18 complains about missing dependencies. Fortunately, the error message is clear. We need to check the QuickBoard service. For this kind of error, I usually try to find examples in Odoo's own code. From the search results, it seems we can't declare RPC as a dependency in Odoo 18. Let's just try to copy from Odoo's own code and give it another go. and we still get an error. This time, it's because I forgot to turn on the developer mode. If you don't enable developer mode, the new client-side JavaScript and XML won't reload it automatically. In this case, the changes only took effect after restarting Odoo. Well, it seems everything is okay now. We'll leave the AI generation for later, since the AI generation won't work if there are other errors elsewhere. Now let's see how I implemented the new features. First, the color themes. The current version only has one color palette for chart items and millions of colors for basic items. Unfortunately, applying a color theme to the basic items means we can no longer have millions of colors. So, I decided to limit the text color for the basic items to just black and white. For the background color, I think 10 colors per palette is enough. 
The next step is to find nice color palettes. I use tools on Coolerist.co, which has some great tools for finding color palettes. The free version is enough for this case. I picked eight color palettes and created a key value pairs constants for later use. Now we need to figure out how the user sets the color on the form view. Odoo has a built-in color picker widget that allows users to choose a color from a predefined list. Unfortunately, we can't use it because it uses Oda's color palette, which is not what we want. We want to use our own color palettes. The easiest way to solve this issue is to copy the color picker code and create our own version of it. In this case, we need to copy two components, the color list component and the color picker widget. As we can see here, the original color list component provides color choices by mapping the values in color's static variable to CSS classes. I changed it to accommodate our own color palettes by replacing it with a property, which will then used as the style of the color choices instead of CSS class. Similar change also applied to the color picker widget. Instead of a choosing from a single list, I changed it to get the choices from the selected color theme. I also add a new property to select whether it's from the foreground color palettes, which we'll use as text color or the background color palettes. And I also changed the field type of the text color and background color for the quickboard item from char field to integer field. Next, we need to provide a way to choose the color theme. This time I choose to place the theme selection input on the left side of the date filters. Fortunately, Odoo already has a configurable select component which we can use. We can configure it to show the predefined color themes. As shown here, I made a custom template with a for each loop of the colors available in the predefined color themes. Next up is a minor improvement for the icon field. I created a new icon picker widget. For this, I use tools like YAML to JSON and JSON query lang to create an icon list. And then, I created the widget using a select menu component. With this widget, users won't have to open a new tab to find icons as they did in the current version. The code for this widget is pretty straightforward. I just provide the select component with the icon list made previously and update the linked field value when users select an icon. Before we continue, I think now it's the perfect time to click that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to this channel yet. Your support is greatly appreciated and will give me motivation to create more interesting videos. For multiple value fields and data grouping features, first we need to take a look at the data structure. The current version uses sequence, X and Y structure for both list items and chart items. Since we're not changing anything for the list items, we're still going to use this format, but only for the list items. For the chart items, I use another structure based on the chart.js data structure. Each combination of the dimension field and a value field is treated as one data set. And each data group of a dimension field and a value field is also treated as one data set. This way the front-end code is the same for both multiple value fields and the data grouping. To implement these, we need to change the value field type to many to many and add one many to one field for the data grouping. We also need to add several validations for the quick board item. The main changes are in the HTTP controller method where we query data and transform it for the quick board items. I separated the code for list items and create another for the charts. For the multiple value fields, from each value field we build a dataset with a read group method and give it a label based on the value field display name.
With data grouping, the dimension values for each group may not be the same as each other. For example, if you add sales total by customer data with salesperson grouping, one salesperson might not have sold anything to one or more customers, while another might have sold something to each and every customer. This will give us datasets with non-uniform dimension values. So my options were either to create filler data so that the datasets have uniform dimension values or manipulate the data on the front-end code to fit chart.js. I chose the first option as it's easier with the help of Panda's data frame. First, I created a filler data. If the dimension data type is date or date time, I created the filler data according to the chosen granularity. For other data types, I simply created a list of unique values from all data groups. Once the filler data is created, for each data group, the filler is joined with an operation similar to a left outer join in SQL. Then, I set any missing values to empty strings or zero for numeric value types. And we're practically done. On the JavaScript side, since we made the result formats the same across the features, it's much simpler. We only need to separate two groups of chart types, the circular ones and those with XY data formats. For circular charts like pie, donut, and polar area charts, we take the first part of the data points as labels and the second part as values for the chart. For bar charts and line charts, we map the first part of the data points as x-axis values and the second part as values for the chart. Lastly, we need to modify the AI generation too. This time, I only modified it to accommodate changes made for the color theme. I will left the rest for your exercise. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video and please support my channel by clicking the subscribe button below.